Hello guys, me Elf, Elf Net Gaming, and we are back with another uh, review video of some technical, technological, technology type stuff. Um, I have here are some Cobb LED strips. These are 12 volts DC. Um, they are made for a car. You put them in a vehicle or daytime running light type deal they are 12 volts but that's not why I got them I'm not putting these in my car I don't need any more LEDs on my car other than what is in the interior <clears throat> reason I got these is because I've been working on my backup lighting system here towels changing from the incandescent uh, stuff to LED designing my own system that will be computer controlled yada 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 that will be for another video at a later date <clears throat> but right now i'm trying to get the groundwork laid on it get all the wiring run all the battery bays in place and these seem to be the good better option um though this one seems to be slightly damaged interesting well, i guess it will work the same anyway <clears throat> I think there are like 37 LEDs in this strip, 12 volts. I've stripped these wires and we'll demonstrate the brightness in a minute. And I'm going to talk about these. These things are very cheap on eBay. I got two for $10. You see I ordered four and this is just a preliminary test and we'll see how they work out. If they work out, I will be ordering a shit pile more of these because I'm building a system here in my home. <clears throat> I already have backup power, but it's all 120 volts. There you rest. <coughs> I want to be able to draw off of the 12 volt battery bays. They're 24 volts, but I have a dual bay. It's 12 and 24, two bays. But I want to be able to draw off the 12 volts because 12 volts really isn't running any inversion. It's just kind of there, only running a couple of small non sine wave inverters for localized lighting things like that around that area <clears throat> so i want to be able to utilize that those battery bays and not have them go to complete waste <clears throat> i don't want to convert them to 24. Um, but in my lighting demonstration i'm going to be using a small sla 1.3 amp hour 12 volt uh, little battery like this we're not going to hook it into the main line i got a lot of wiring i got to do i've been running conduit of TW 12 gauge red and black all what, the past couple of days in my attic getting it all the code I'm, I'm it's low voltage so it has to fall under a certain code but I do things kind of overkill to the real code the uh, NEC code I'm trying to follow that with DC low voltage um Basically, the system is going to utilize uh, big contactor relays or solid state relays, maybe. I haven't decided yet. Right now, I've got mechanical contactors on it uh, from air conditioning system type relays on this. When the AC fails, <coughs> the an AC relay tied into that <coughs> clicks on clicks 24 volts to the main contactor and fires up the big inverters. That's how it works now. So it's a double pull, double throw relay on the AC main 120 circuit. And, excuse me, when it's engaged, the, on one pole is dead. There's nothing going through it where the 24 volt you know, lies over here to here. The coil loses power it clicks back over and gets the low current 24 volts going to the big contactor which in turn throws the high current into the main system well <clears throat> going to be doing something similar with a 12 volt rail <coughs> but i think i want to go with a solid state solution and not mechanical <clears throat> and what that will do is do at the house in lighting fixtures like my fluorescent lighting fixtures on the ballast covers i will have these stuck in now i'm not going to rely on the sticky pad that comes with this i'm going to be putting like gorilla glue or something i'll pull that sticky pad off of this and actually getting a better cement on it to hold them and wiring these to that system <coughs> and to a switch <coughs> it will be a double <coughs> excuse me damn the allergies aren't kicking up um i'll put in double switches 
you know, those two uh, deals where one will be controlling the AC light, the other one will be controlling 12 volts. Of course, the 12 volts will not work unless the power has failed or I go in there and trip the, uh, you know, turn it on manually at the control box, 12 volts. And that way, when the lights go down, <clears throat> the main goes down, if it goes down, these aren't burning all the time. I have the option to turn them off the same wall switch <clears throat> as I would normally with lights. Um, <clears throat> and these are going to important areas like the kitchen, bathrooms, hallways, things like that. It's not going to be very hard to wire these because all of my house wiring I went through and put conduit in the walls. I actually took out all the old Romex staples and all that bullshit years ago and wired it commercially basically with conduit and things like that that way if I wanted to pull more wire and there are spare wires already in these conduits you know just sitting there in case circuits go bad or for whatever reason I, I always believe in redundancy um, but these are going to be a test to that I'm not sure they got bent maybe I set on it <laughs> But we'll see how bright some of these are. What is the one I got? There it is. It's this one. So we'll fire one up. We'll see how bright it is. I already done this, and this is gonna kill the camera. <laughs> well, there it is, and that is bright. It's cold white. It could have got warm, but. I don't know how many how much current that draws but that actually lights up the area here pretty brightly all right enough of that let me find my meter so we're gonna look at the current that's DC amps Should be no more 200 milliamps, I would think. <coughs> so, what I'm gonna do is connect to the negative. And this wire is that weird, uh, it seems to be not like all the way copper, it seems to be like that weird Chinese type wire. It's copper coated, it will not stay twisted. You know, it's kind of springy kind of kind of wire it's weird <clears throat> anyway I just want to connect the negative on and then we'll put that hold that down <clears throat> can't set meter can you? Right on Apps are we drawing? Oh, it's over 200. So we got about 400 milliamps on this uh, particular strip here. 400 milliamps. Um, it's not bad. I mean, it's not good. But it's not bad. I was expecting more than an amp, but yeah, 400 milliamps. 48. Well, so 1.6 amps for the four, that's not too bad. Definitely can run all of that off the wire I have up there. <clears throat> so, I mean, we could do the math for the wattage, but it really doesn't matter at this point. I'm just calling it, you know, 40 milliamps uh, at 12 volts. Uh, shit, I can't do it in my head. I can't remember. Or maybe Clive or somebody can do it for me. <laughs> yeah, worth checking out his channel. I I really enjoy his videos. Um, run a lot, run. But this wire is kind of weird. But I, I I really think I don't like these pigtails too much. Um, there's no strain relief here, by the way. But they are just soldered on. If you get the metal up, pull the tabs. I get the metal up I can solder in a better pigtail maybe something that's not I mean look at that I 
I mean, Christ, it won't focus. Why won't you focus? Look, I mean, look at the strip. What am I going to do with that? What terminal is that going to go in? I mean, really. Anyway, on eBay, about $10, some change. I think the shipping was free. You get two of these. They come in a little box. And I don't know how many watts. Somebody do the math and figure out the wattage. I'm not going to do it. 400 milliamps, 12 volts. Not bad. Seems like it could be better. I could do some current limiting on it. That way the batteries... I might do that. Might get them to 200. Be a little better. But anyway, um, yeah, eBay and top lights, LEDs, emergency backup stuff that I'm designing here. And yeah, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. It's all painless and free. And I will see you guys in the next video.